all the uh, services and all the functions that the public sector provides, the roads, the backbone of the internet, the variety of uh, infrastructure that governments help support. So in the case of the United States, the federal government is the single largest employer uh, with, within that country. And then if you were to think about all the other public sector organizations that exist, some 90,000 different levels of interrelationship between government entities, special districts, municipalities, state governments, and so forth, you can see the scale in which we're talking about the uh, employment base. And then, of course, you think about all the indirect uh, interactions between the government agencies and private sector and how many private sector jobs are themselves dependent upon public sector uh, contracts and so forth. Defense contractors, for example, uh, public rail systems. It becomes apparent rather quickly uh, the importance of the public sector as a major employer within a, within a country. The public aspect of public administration, as opposed to classical civil administration, is the involvement of democracy and the relationship of democracy and elections and as a result of that campaigning and the promises to deliver services to publics in order to win votes. The data is very clear that since the 1960s, there's been a steady decline in the American perception of how well a job its government is doing. People have grown more cynical of government. These, this phenomenon has been replicated uh, across uh, other countries, industrial uh, democracies as well. Uh, in the case of Australia, the public disenchantment with government is uh, approaching about 50 percent. This refers to the classic problem, what we call the politics administrative dichotomy, and it speaks to the issue of where the, uh, the democracy bit of elections and campaign promises and the expectations of voters from their politician, where that process ends and where the so-called neutral business, or at least supposed neutral business, of administration that's beyond the scope of politics or beyond the fray of politics is supposed to begin. It's become very popular politically to blame government for the problems of why society isn't always working at its optimal efficiency and it, 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 in, its best, in its best condition. The popular response to fixing government is saying, well, look at the private sector and let's simply adopt the private sector and make government run like the private sector. And I always come back and say, a good private sector, a well-run private sector organization or a bad one? The issue is about creating functional, sustainable organizations, not about ideologies of public versus private methods. One of the things that we've seen in the public sector is, for example, at county level, uh, people working in Department of Social Services, their caseloads have expanded greatly to the point where it's very difficult for them to do their jobs in some counties to protect families in the way that they ought to, given the limited amount of resources they have and the huge caseloads that's been dumped upon them. We have a huge labor force that is now beginning to retire out, and that is creating a massive succession planning uh, challenge to governments across the world. But it's also creating a wonderful opportunity for young people if we can get them to see the value of public service, to seize those jobs, to be able to get into the public sector, there are careers literally waiting for them to open up. The traditional saying of those among globalization scholars is, you know, think global, act local. We can't afford to do that uh, in, an, in an age where, you know, the global city 
is the main uh, is the mainstay of society. We literally have to act global while we're thinking local.